Hey folks, thanks for watching the Maranatha Global Bible Studies. We pray that these resources encourage you. It has been a value to us from the beginning of FAI to produce quality media to resource the global body and give it away for free. Free and free forever. Now that said, if you want to join us in reaching those who do not have the gospel, we invite you to jump in on our $5 a month giving campaign. Literally skip a coffee and you can change the face of the Middle East in the 1040 window. Head to FAIstudios.org where you can give safely and securely. Maranatha. Welcome back, beloved. Welcome back to the Sinai to Zion study. Uh, this is now session 15. In last session, we began discussing the concept of Jacob's trouble, Israel's tribulation. It's another way to word it. And we looked at just a few portions um, from the Song of Moses, Deuteronomy 32, really back there in the foundational texts, the books of Moses. And we discussed right there where it lays out the covenant chastisement cycle. Okay, now we're going to turn to some particular passages in the prophets where the prophets, again, are expanding upon. They are reiterating. They're expounding upon the words of Moses. They're constantly looking back to the foundational words of Moses, expanding upon what he said, expounding upon what he said in order to understand the future. So we're going to begin with the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 30, uh, beginning in verse 4. These are the words which the Lord spoke to Israel and Judah. So all of Israel. This is what the Lord says. We have heard a cry of terror, of dread. There is no peace. That's harsh. There is no peace. Terror, dread. Ask and see whether a male can give birth. This is such a fantastic statement or question. It's rhetorical. And of course, the answer is no. Men cannot give birth. But it's so funny because here we live in an age of absolute insanity. When people go, men can give birth, like the world has gone absolutely nuts. No, men cannot give birth. Men cannot give birth. Why then, if that's the case, the prophet goes on, he says, why then do I see every man with his hands on his stomach like a woman in labor. They're in agony. Strong men look like women in terror and agony. And he says, and every face has turned pale white. The blood has gone out of their skin. They are terrified. If that's the case, if men can't, why do I see a bunch of men that look like they're in labor, in agony? And then he says, how awful that day will be. Some translations say that day will be great. Now, it's great in the sense of the great and terrible day of the Lord. Um, Malachi 4, verse 2, I believe. And then he says there will be no other like it. That day is going to be so horrible. There, there's nothing in history that will compare to it. Guys, there's been some dark, horrific, bloody, brutal, barbaric days in history. He says, but that day is coming. It's going to be the worst. It's going to be the terrible day of the Lord, and there's nothing like it. Like that statement, whether he, it's just hyperbole, and it's just going to be up there among some of the worst days of the earth, you know, or whether it is literally, specifically, absolutely, technically, uh, quantifiably worse than any day in his Like, I, I don't want to go there. It's going to be a horrible, horrific day. And then it says, it will be the time of trouble for Jacob. It will be the time of Jacob's trouble. Then he says, but he will be saved out of it. So here is where we have this statement is made first. The time of Jacob is just another word for Israel, all of Israel. This is going to be the time of Israel's tribulation. Now, again, throughout history, Israel has undergone some really brutal, horrible days. They've been decimated, wiped out to where only a few are left. They've gone through these multiple covenant chastisement cycles. They've been destroyed, invaded, just, you know, very few left, scattered among the nations, and then they're brought back. But the last one, the last one, Jeremiah says, is going to be worse than all of the previous ones. He goes, it's going to be the time of Jacob's trouble. And he says, but despite that, listen, there will be a remnant that will be saved. Just like before, just like all the previous times, the Lord will preserve a remnant. Why? Because he is faithful. He's faithful to his covenant. So that's a, a good foundational text in Jeremiah. Now we're going to look at um, the words of, actually it's Gabriel, the angel, within the book of Daniel. Okay, so Daniel chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, and we have to understand that the chapters, they were not in the original text. They were added much later. And really chapter 10, 11, and 12 are one 
continuous prophecy, one contiguous prophecy. They really shouldn't be broken up. Sometimes the chapter breaks almost make it a little confusing. So in chapter 11, in the previous verses, it was just describing the Antichrist at the end of the age. It's describing the abomination of desolation. It's describing the Antichrist being given power over the saints and defeating them. It's a brutal time for Israel. It's a brutal time for Jerusalem. And then in verse 1 of chapter 12, it says this, Now at that time, Michael, the great prince, who stands guard over the sons of your people, of course, that's Israel, he will arise. There's this great battle at, at the end of the age. Again, in the context of the Antichrist, the last three and a half years just before the return of Jesus. And he says, and there will be a time of distress such as has never occurred since there was a nation until that time. So there the angel Gabriel is expanding upon the words of Jeremiah. He says it will be the time of Jacob's trouble. There will be nothing. There's nothing like it. I love the way the prophets interacted with each other. This is called intertextuality. But it's much more than just the text interacting. It's Gabriel actually quoting the prophet Jeremiah. And Jeremiah was, of course, just expanding upon the words of Moses. And they were familiar with each other. They studied each other. Certainly Gabriel was familiar with the words of uh, Jeremiah. He says, it will be a time of tribulation, a time of trouble, a time of distress such as has never occurred since there was a name. Like, this is very strong language that we need to take very seriously. And at that time, your people, everyone who is found in the book of life, written in the book, he will be rescued, he'll be saved. Through what? Ultimately, the return of the Messiah, the resurrection of the dead. Well, for those that are saved already, we get raptured, resurrected. For those that are destined to be saved, he comes back and saves them. Because going into the millennium, there'll actually be some in their natural bodies, some in their resurrected bodies. That's uh, too technical to get in right now. He says, many of those who sleep in the dust of the ground will awake, some to everlasting life, others to disgrace and everlasting contempt. Now, ultimately, again, to be technically accurate, the resurrection of the wicked takes place much later. But this just kind of summarizes. Just at the end of this current wicked age comes the resurrection, both of the righteous and ultimately of the wicked as well. Okay, so we've touched on Moses, we've touched on Jeremiah, and we've touched on the words of Gabriel within the prophecy of Daniel. I'm actually going to end it right here. In the next session, we're going to continue because we're going to look at more prophets. We're going to look at Isaiah, Joel, etc. And these are such important passages that I want to take a little more time to make sure we, we really elaborate on these things. Um, so we're going to continue on this painful theme of Jacob's trouble. So until then, God bless, guys, and Maranatha.